Today I will share with you how to edit 5 easy shots in Anti-Gravity Studio. So let's get started. To download Anti-Gravity Studio, visit the link in the video description and then download and install Anti-Gravity Studio. The first step is to import your Anti-Gravity footage. So to do this, go to Open Files, locate the footage on your computer, select the footage you wish to import and click Open. Wait for the footage to load and all your footage will load on the left hand side. To preview a footage, double click to open it. To look around your footage, click and drag the screen. To make reframing easier, go to Window Guides, enable the grid lines and the center point. And now you can use the center point and the grid lines to reframe your 360 video. If you want to edit your anti-gravity videos for TikTok, then you can go to the aspect ratio and change it to 9 by 16. Or if you want to edit for YouTube, then you can change it to 16 by 9. By default, when you edit anti-gravity videos, it has a direction lock applied. You can see the direction lock over here. It's always going to look in the direction the drone is heading in, which is the front view. And this will give you less flexibility when editing. So if you want the most amount of flexibility when editing, to look in any direction without locking onto the front view, then I always select free view. Now when I play back the footage, it's not going to lock onto the front view. The second option I like to change before I start editing is the stitching. So to do this, go to the accessories tab and under stitching optimization, I always like to use AI stitching for the best results. Let's edit shot number one, the orbit. To edit this shot, the first step is to trim the shot shorter. So I'll move forward in the timeline where I want this shot to begin. And I want the shot to begin here. So I will mark this as the start point. Then I'll move forward in the timeline where I want this shot to end. I want to end the shot here, so I will mark this as the end point. The next step is to track the church in the middle. So to do this, I will go to the beginning of the timeline, click Deep Track, Make a selection over the church. Click Start Tracking. And wait for the tracking to finish. When the tracking is complete, tap Stop Tracking. And now, the church will be kept in the middle of the video. Click the green highlighted area to edit the position of the tracking. So here, I will adjust the field of view to 120 to zoom out. And I will change the distortion to zero to get rid of fisheye distortion. The next step is to add speed. So to do this, I will go to the beginning of the timeline. I will move forward one second in the timeline. Click Speed. Add the speed up until this viewpoint. Click to add the speed. Change the speed to 16 times. Then after this speed, I will leave one second of normal speed to admire the view. So I'll move forward to 21.8 seconds. Click here, 
add a new speed and I'll add the speed around 3 seconds before the end of the timeline at 1.19 seconds so I will add the speed up to 1.16 seconds and click here change this speed to 16 times and now the speed has been added the next step is to add motion blur to make the speed look more natural so to do this go to the media processing tab under screen processing make sure motion ND is enabled then change the spread to 15 and the intensity to 15 as well so now when I play this back it looks like this you will need to export the shot to see the final result Shot number two is the barrel roll. To edit this shot, I will add a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. I will change the distortion to zero to get rid of fisheye distortion and I will change the field of view to 120 to zoom out. Then I'll move forward around 2 seconds in the timeline, add a keyframe here, tilt down to look at the waterfall, and then I'll move forward in the timeline about 2 seconds before the end of the timeline. Add a keyframe here and then I will adjust the pan to turn 180 degrees looking down at the waterfall and I will adjust the tilt to look straight down at 90 degrees. Then I'll go to the end of the timeline, check the view is OK and add a keyframe. When I play this back I now have a barrel roll shot. Shot number three is the 360 spin. To edit this shot, I will add a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline, adjust the pan to look forward, I will change the field of view to 120 to zoom out and change the distortion to zero to remove fisheye distortion, then I will go to the end of the timeline, add a keyframe Rotate the view 360 degrees to add the spin. Then go to the beginning of the timeline. Click speed. Click the speed at the end of the timeline. Select 8 times speed. Then go to media processing. Change the spread and intensity to 15. And this is the result. Shot number four is the flyby. To edit this shot, I will add a keyframe at the beginning. I will change the field of view to 120 to zoom out and change the distortion to zero to get rid of fisheye distortion. Then I will pan to look at myself over here. Then I'll move forward in the timeline 
as I get closer towards myself, add a keyframe here. I will pan to put myself in the middle. Then I'll move forward in the timeline until I'm directly parallel to myself. Add a keyframe. Adjust the pan to look towards myself. And I can click and drag the keyframe to reposition it. And click the keyframe to adjust the pan. Then I'll move forward in the timeline as the drone goes past. Add a keyframe. Change the pan to look towards myself. Then go to the end of the timeline. Add a keyframe. And adjust the pan so I'm in the middle. And when I play this back, I have a flyby shot. Shot number five is the reverse. The great thing about this shot is that it was initially a flight going forward. But when I looked at this shot in editing, I found that the reverse shot was more impressive. So to edit a reverse shot, I will go to the beginning of the timeline, add a keyframe, Make sure the tilt is zero. I will adjust the pan to put this stream in the middle. Change the field of view to 120 to zoom out. And change the distortion to zero. Then I'll move forward. When the wave crashes onto the beach. Add a keyframe here. Adjust the pan to look at the beach. Then I'll go to the end of the timeline. Add a keyframe. And adjust the pan to look at the beach. And now when I play this back, I have a reverse shot. That's it. Now you know how to edit five different shots in Anti-Gravity Studio.